Okay, let's get started. Um, welcome, or I should probably say Itayu. Uh, my name is Christian. I'm here uh, with a colleague of mine, Mark, who, after a bit of feedback from Larry during his presentation, decided not to get up on stage again. So he's sitting down there. Um, uh, we're both here sponsored by our employer, Perum Systems, and what I wanted to do uh, today is to actually talk about some of the way cool stuff that we're actually doing in the real world for real money, um, providing real services in a very, very serious, substantial way, all based on Perl 5. And uh, I then want to continue on to some of the uh, challenges uh, that we have with where Perl is going with where our company's going, and I have a bit of a wish list. Um, and the wish list is very wishful thinking for Pearl um, to get fit in 20 minutes. So let's dig right in. Uh, Perm Systems Limited is uh, the company that we work for, and we're an application services provider. We've been going for um, a bit over 10 years now. Um, and we run one main application, which uh, is used in the financial services industry. Uh, we have clients around the world, um, and um, we process or help process for our clients um, over 21 million transactions every single day. Uh, we actually provide a service uh, that is post-trade reconciliations, uh, so uh, financial institutions trade with each other, um, and we help them uh, sort out the mess afterwards. Uh, and the value of what we reconcile on a single day is about $1.2 trillion, so uh, rounding matters to us and to our clients quite significantly as well. Um, and we do all of that with Pearl, and actually with very, very few staff. We're a relatively small company with only 20 staff based in London. Uh, and of those, um, six are dedicated Pearl developers. I have to say, um, we do actually have one or two PHP uh, developers too. Uh, but of the six, we actually have uh, three here because um, our company and we individually are dedicated to the Pearl community. So we want to um, uh, be active, uh, take part, and um, actually help uh, the community uh, to, to thrive. We're also hiring. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, we, we we are we are hiring. Yes, so there's PHP programmers. <laughs> uh, prefer not to. <laughs> prefer not to. Um, here's a quick summary of of, of what we basically do, uh, and. Um, uh, uh, Early on, there was a book that was mentioned, Data Munging, um, in Perl. Basically, what we do is we do data munging. So we have two clients um, uh, who trade with each other. They send, each client sends us um, a file. Uh, we actually run um, a process that we call load items. So basically, data munge that file into a common format. Uh, we then have another process which we call rec items uh, that then reconciles that. And the result is available to all of our clients via um, our website www.sblworks.com and um, if any of you try to access that site you'll not be able to because it's firewalled. Um, I'm also the security officer. I have root, um, so try to get in. If you do get in, let me know. Um, <laughs> so with all of that, how do we actually uh, uh, go about doing that? This is a hint. All of those blue things are 100% Perl. Uh, because Perl, uh, right from the start, was the language that um, the founders chose to create uh, this bit of technology. Um, and uh, to my knowledge, we actually have one of the most uh, substantial production Perl applications uh, that's out there. Um, I've, I've yet to see anything that's, that's orders of magnitude more significant. So for what we do, all of the business logic is in Perl. There is no other programming language that um, is involved in any way whatsoever. Um, we actually run in production around about a million lines of Perl code. Um, you can imagine not all of it's pretty, but some is quite beautiful. How much of it is tested? Um, uh, maybe, I don't, well, no. don't ask me silly questions like that. <laughs> Anyway, um, that translates into about 900 uh, uh, .pls um, and nearly 4,500 uh, PM files. Uh, clearly, because we're in the financial services uh, sector, we have to keep um, lots of information about what processing happens when, why things match, why things don't match. 
so we actually create lots of log files. So we use Perl code to create lots of log. We then use more Perl code to help analyze lots of log um, and to uh, alert us to the things in the log files that um, uh, we actually uh, need to know about. Uh, and the real beauty is that for our business, for what we do, Perl um, helps us in a very, very significant way to actually uh, deliver our service and deliver it in such a way uh, that we can provide a better service than our competitors. Um, simple examples, back to data munging. Um, our competitors say, this is the standard format that you client have to provide data in, which means the client has to do lots of work. We basically say, we're a Perl shop, throw at us what you have, we'll deal with it. And we deal with it because of Perl and because of um, how cool Perl is and what Perl can do for us. So just a couple of examples of the cool things um, that we do with Perl. Uh, with all of these millions of items that we process every single day, of these transactions, um, every single bit of data is touched by so many different lines of code that at times it's quite difficult for us to understand, okay, so well, why at the end of all of that processing does this particular item have this attribute with this value? Why is the trade value or the interest rate or whatever other fi figure this particular thing? Um, what we've designed into our um, entire code base is this idea of tracing a particular item. Uh, normally what happens is when we get a data file from a client, um, that's row-based data or record-based data, we turn each record into a hash process through our system. But what we do is, if we actually want to find out where a particular uh, value is changed, we can use the magical tie um, uh, concept available in Perl um, to uh, turn an item into something much, much cleverer that actually tells us exactly what attribute of this particular uh, transaction um, is assigned what value, um, exactly where in which module, uh, so that if we feel that we're getting incorrect results, we do actually have a way to um, hunt those down very, very quickly. So Perl's fantastic. Not seeing something equally powerful somewhere else. Another example, um, this might seem um, a, a bit bland uh, because factory classes uh, in object-oriented design, of course, are uh, uh, not really a, a new concept whatsoever. Uh, but we, we have, with a million lines of code and that many modules, lots of challenges where we have particular client types or classes or types of client, um, particular types of trade, uh, particular types of this, particular types of files. So we have all of these um, different very abstract concepts that have much, much more specific um, uh, behavior uh, that we need to model to get the whole process right. And obviously that combination uh, uh, multiplies out to quite a large number. So we actually use uh, this idea of, of factory classes throughout our code base very, very effectively so that when a particular client sends a particular file with a particular kind of uh, data in it, magically the whole thing's processed uh, via um, the, the right bit of code. Um, and all of that, of course, requires um, some of the neat things in Perl that it's quite easy to decide very, very late in the actual processing cycle what bit of class you're going to apply to uh, what particular item. So, um, with all of that and uh, our declaration of love for Perl, um, I want to move on to some of the challenges uh, that we face. Uh, because having started um, in 2000, we actually have production code today uh, that is basically uh, Perl 5.6 and we actually have production code that goes all the way to 5.14. So there's quite a range of different coding styles. Um, syntax flavors of, of deprecated things. Um, I think the most recent set of warnings that we cleared up was lots of um, uh, UC function calls that don't like undefs anymore. Um, so there's lots of stuff there, all of which we have to manage. Uh, there's plenty of procedural code, of lots of object-oriented code. We actually have, um, I think, quite a few different patterns of object-oriented code as well in terms of what constitutes a class, what doesn't. Um, and on top of all of the things that we actually do right now, uh, we have a number of strategic product developments in the pipeline which um, conservatively estimated uh, mean that our code base is probably going to triple in size from, from where we are now. Um, so there's going to be some reuse, um, of course, some extension, but we have uh, some major new product, uh, pr products and uh, projects in the pipeline 
which mean that we have to significantly grow um, what we do and do lots more work to actually get there. Are we going to use Perl for that, my heckler asks. Um, it's a good question, I have a slide for that. <laughs> um, and as part of that, we want to grow the team um, of currently six dedicated uh, uh, Perl people to um, a larger number, which is why we're hiring. Um, but that brings me on to how we actually get there. And uh, the challenge that we have is with our existing code base, we have no business case at all for a rewrite of existing code in any other language. So whether it's Perl 6 or Python or Java or anything else, um, basically we have so much opportunity to attract new business, develop new services that our focus is we want to do new things and the existing stuff we basically want to maintain, um, evolve a bit, but not really rewrite because fundamentally there's no business case for that. Um, our clients love the functionality, but actually it doesn't really change that much. So uh, we wouldn't, as a company, gain from uh, rewriting a million lines of Perl code. It would be a huge project. Um, and I mean, even today with a new version of Perl or a new version of a CPAN module, um, we do have to do some uh, refactor and rewrite. So basically our, our way forward is one of developing new products, um, providing new services to our clients, and in effect drowning out uh, the old code base somewhat, so that uh, by adding two million more lines of Perl code, we have to, um, three million lines in total, um, end up with two million modern lines and a million sort of older lines, and eventually the idea is that the old code base goes, grows smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, but that's really just a very, very pragmatic way in how to manage an application of that size. Um, and with that, of course, we're thinking, okay, uh, given that we're going to add that much um, in functionality to our business, uh, we're going to add that much code, and we're actually going to hire people to do that as well. How do we do it, and where do we do it? And this is where uh, we have um, the Perl 5, Perl 6 discussion. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, from, and this is from my personal perspective, there is actually a very, very active discussion in our company right now. Um, do we continue to be a, basically a Perl shop? Are we going to be 100% committed to Perl and continue to build all this new stuff in Perl or not? Um, personally, I'd want it to be in Perl, but I can see the business reason where if it's difficult to find staff um, uh, who, who, who know Perl, if the Perl community um, is involved in discussions in terms of is it Perl 5, is it Perl 6, is it Perl 7, or Perl 11, or whatever else, um, and there's lots of development and then fragmented evolution in multiple directions at the same time, from a basic business point of view, the only thing that matters is that we can deliver a service, and we need a working language for that, and we need people, staff, to be able to code in that language. Um, so from that point of view, we're actually having a discussion about, well, what is the language uh, that we're going to do all this new development in, and you can pick whatever you want. I think, Mark, discussions right now sort of mention the Java word quite a lot, so, but anyway. So, um, what we really want is a cool, hot, sexy, fit Perl, um, and because of where we're coming from and because uh, this is our business, that basically means um, an evolution of Perl 5. It doesn't mean a completely new language, which maybe from a computer science perspective might uh, be a cleaner, neater, um, a more intuitive, better, faster, or whatever else language. Um, at, at this juncture, we're basically just interested in having something that'll work, that'll do the job, um, and that doesn't require us to do a huge rewrite um, that we don't uh, uh, really want to spend money on. So what we want is, is we're looking for um, some form of, of stronger integration of the object model um, into uh, the core Perl language. Um, I mean, there is discussion about whether that's Moose or not, or what flavor of Moose. I don't want to get into the detail, detail there, but um, we actually have very, very many different flavors of, of, of object and what is an object in our code base right now, and it would help our path forward if there was some syndication, unification, basically focus on, on one particular flavor of object oriented that is the Perl uh, flavor. Uh, but it needs to be evolution, so uh, something like the Python string semantic change from the two series to the three series for us would be a complete disaster because basically we'd have to spend 
use rewriting code that we don't want uh, uh, want to spend any money on. Um, so what we want is we basically want um, an active community. Uh, we want the language to be cool. We want the language to be attractive to businesses. We want the language to be attractive to um, uh, to people, to uh, computer science graduates, uh, to developers. We want uh, basically we we want the community around Perl to, uh, to to be alive, to grow, to thrive. Uh, Perl is doing wonders for our business. Uh, we love Perl. We want to love Perl back. Um, so. As a company, we're quite happy to uh, to, to, to sponsor um, activities uh, to uh, uh, receive ideas on on uh, what else we can do uh, by sending basically 50% of our um, development team uh, uh, here to, uh, uh, to to Yapsi in Kiev. Um, we are. Uh, through demonstrating that we're um, interested and we want to move things forward. And uh, for all of that, I would like to invite anybody who has an idea on how we can actually um, manage some of these challenges, on exactly how uh, we can go about um, getting uh, the choice for our future development right on exactly um, uh, of how we can decide and, and, and take some of these difficult decisions um, so that uh, we actually end up with a choice that is pro Perl community. So any encouragement, um, any suggestions, any questions that you have, very welcome to um, send them there and uh, we'll listen and very welcome. Thank you.